Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. The Word of God is marvelous. That same scripture can speak about multiple truths from one event. We know that the Word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit. There are no errors within it. It is fully reliable. In order that we might know the truth, apply the truth to our life, and live a life that is praiseworthy, that manifests God's glory. In other words, is a God-pleasing testimony before Him and others. And that's in essence what Messiah is teaching today. He is having his 12 disciples, and we emphasize that number 12, relating to Israel. Those 12 disciples go forth. And even though that is an historical event that took place 2,000 years ago almost, we know something. What we're studying tonight has great implications for the last days. In other words, we can learn things from this scripture that is going to speak to those disciples, those followers of Yeshua, that is followers of Jesus Christ, in that last generation, those end times. With that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Matthew in chapter 10. Now, we concluded last week with this concept of judgment, where he spoke to those who had seen his miracles, those who had heard his truth, and what did they do? They rejected it. How foolish. And he speaks boldly to them, saying this, it will be tolerable more for those of Sodom ve Amorah, Sodom and Gomorrah, that place of abomination. That place where everyone did what was right in their own eyes. That place that God burned up. He says, it will be more tolerable for them than for those individuals who heard the gospel and rejected it. When is he speaking about? He specifically says, those last days. That day of judgment. So this gives us the context We're speaking about things that have an end-time connotation. That's the context we need to see. And with that said, look with me to Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. He says these words, Behold, I am sending you as sheep in the midst of wolves. Now we know something. If there is conflict, and we're going to see there's going to be great conflict. If there is conflict between wolves and sheep, who's going to be the victor? Well, in the natural, it's going to be the wolves. They are stronger. They are better equipped. And it doesn't matter the numbers. The wolves have so much more ability in the flesh. But we need to realize something. We are not called to victory in this age. We're called to obedience. We're called to do what God instructs us. No, our victory, which is assured, comes through the entrance into the kingdom of God. It's only then should we expect the outcome of victory, the victory that he has won for us and the results of our faithfulness to him. That's in the age to come, the kingdom of God. But in this life, well, we can suffer as we're going to see and even lose our life because of of our faith. So he warns us, verse 16, 
Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be, most Bibles say, wise. Now, this is not the normal word in Greek for being wise. Sophia, wisdom. This is a word that comes from the Greek word for thinking and thinking and thinking. Looking at a situation and understanding it from the proper point of view. Now, we read here, be as wise as serpents. And the idea here is cunning. Satan, he is wicked. We are never called to be wicked or dishonest. But Satan was cunning, meaning this. He understood the truth. He didn't submit to it. But he acted in light of it. He deceived Adam and Eve because he knew the reality and they doubted. They questioned. Now, he led them to doubt, but it was because he knew. And what it's telling us here is just that, that we need to know things and make decisions based upon wisdom. Think thoroughly in light of the truth of God. So we read, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents. And notice this, most Bibles will say, and innocent as doves. Now, pay attention to that word for innocent. When we look at it, we can also translate it as sincere. One of the things that, that God will use mightily in a person is sincerity. When you are sincere, God takes notice of that. And it is an invitation to the Holy Spirit to anoint you mightily, to work in your life, to empower you, to give you that wisdom that we talked about earlier, to understand, to be able to think thoroughly through a situation and understand the reality of it. So be sincere, be innocent. Now, when we look at this word in the original language, we see something. It has a prefix. And this prefix is really one letter in Greek. It's the first letter, the alpha. And that prefix is for the purpose of negating something, making it the opposite. So without that prefix, you know what this word really means? It means to be mixed minded. When someone is mixed minded, and James spoke of this, they are easily tossed here and there. They have no root, no anchor in their lives, neither spiritually nor physically, for being in the right location and remaining there. So this word means not to be mixed minded, but single minded. And what is that single mindedness? To desire above all things to be pleasing to God, to obey Him. Not to think of yourself, but to think of how I need to testify to others. And why do I say that? Well, this, listen to the next statement. He writes here, Therefore, you be wise as serpent and innocence as doves. Verse 17, but watch out. Now, this is a word of warning. And we need to understand that we have to be warned or to be cautious. Because he says, and we need to prepare ourselves for this. Be cautious from men. Why? Because they will deliver you to councils and into their synagogues. And it says, and they will scourge you. This is a word for being flogged. Now. This scripture tells us something. We know that we're speaking about the land of Israel. Remember what Messiah said last week. He tells them, do not go into the roads of the nations. Don't go into the cities of the Samaritans, but to who? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. So there's an emphasis here on the Jewish people. And he says, you are going to encounter opposition. 
You will be brought as, as someone who is seen as a criminal before councils. This is governmental authority. You will be brought before, be before governing places and gathering places. This is the term for synagogue. And you will be scourged. You are going to be intensely punished. Now, what's being flogged or scourged as it said here? Well, there would be a whip with many, many cords. And you would be whipped across your back in a most brutal way. So not only are you going to be arrested, but what the scripture is telling us is in the last days, and we'll show you why in a moment we're dealing with the last days, that you may be tortured for your faith. Now, I have taught that, and people has kind of just mocked that idea that for our faith in Yeshua, that is Jesus Christ, that we're going to be arrested and tortured? Well, let me tell you something. Hopefully most of you know this very well. There are several countries, and the list is growing, that torture believers for their faith. To say, I want to worship Messiah, the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua, Jesus, and I want to tell others about him, and I want to express the righteousness and the justice that he has called me to, to document with my lifestyle, with good deeds, that will bring you into prison. It will cause you to be tortured, and many are being put to death for their faith. And here's what you need to be aware of. And it's not something that I think, but it's something that I know because I trust in the word of God. In the last days, the countries are going to continue to grow. It is going to be the norm, no matter where you live. Whether you live in North America or South, whether you live in Africa or Europe or Asia or Australia, wherever you may be, there's going to have to be any way to flee this persecution, this, temp this, this trials, this torturous conduct. And he's telling them now. He's speaking to who? disciples. And even though this occurred almost 2,000 years ago, and people can say, well, it has to do with the persecution of Israel that took place around 70 AD and thereafter, but notice there's a clue that confirms that we are speaking about the last days. Let's move on. Verse 18. And before governors or leaders and kings, you will be brought, why? On account of me. All of this suffering, being arrested, being flogged, we'll see in a moment, being put to death, being forced to testify before governors and kings, all of this is on account of Yeshua. On account of him, he says, all of this is on account of me. But for what reason? Here it continues. To testify to them, I think to them is to the Jewish people, and to the nations. Verse 19. Now you cannot put aside that we're supposed to have a testimony in the last days. Before rulers, before even kings, that might mean presidents and prime ministers, to tell them the truth. And notice what he says in verse 19. But whenever it says that, that this should be, whenever they deliver you, do not worry how or what that you should say. So never be concerned with what you're supposed to say because of what the scripture tells us now. We're going to be arrested. We're going to be forced to give testimony. Praise God for our faith. And everything is an account of him. And notice what the scripture instructs us. He says, do not worry on how or what to speak. Why? He says, because it will not be you who are the one speaking, but the spirit of your father. That is the spirit. Of our Heavenly Father. Now, the Spirit, one of the things we know, and I go back to this so frequently, to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, 
when the Spirit of God, when it says, Ruach Elohim merachefet al pnei the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And the world was in a state of chaos. In the Hebrew, tohu ve vohu. It means to be out of order. The Spirit of God brings things in to order. And what the Word of God is telling us is, do not worry. When you are, are, are called to give testimony, it's not going to be your words. Don't worry about how to speak or what you should say. It's not going to be you. But God is going to bring order within your testimony because he's the one that's going to be speaking. For it will be the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Verse 21. Now in verse 21, we see a situation. A situation that might be shocking. But it's happened before. We have seen when there's been a dictatorial government that individuals out of fear, out of of a desire to preserve life, out of a desire to, to be given food for sustenance, that people betray one another. And this is what the scripture is saying here in an undeniable way. So look at this text. Matthew 10 and verse 21, we read, For brother will deliver brother to, what does the scripture say? Death. Your own brother. Out of fear, out of faithlessness, out of not having received the gospel, not having the Holy Spirit to empower him, to give him the right frame of mind, he may deliver you over to death. And it says, and father, children, and children will rise up against their parents and they will put them to death. Now, what do we see here? There's a lot of betrayal going on. There's a lot of death. And all of this, don't miss the context. All of this is because of Messiah Yeshua. It's because of our faith. Because of our desire to be that that testifier, that witness, and to do so in a way that manifests truth and brings honor and glory to him, speaking forth against injustice and unrighteousness against sin. And the world in the last days, the world will hate us. And we'll see that. We're going to be arrested. We're going to be taken before before a court. We're going to be punished, physically tortured, and as we see here, put to death. Look now to verse 22. And you will be hated by all. Now, has that happened yet? No, but it's going to be. What this scripture tells us is that everyone who is not a believer will hate true believers. I want to say that again. Everyone who is not a believer in Messiah Yeshua, they will hate the one who is all who are believers. I'm going to share something because right now, this is being broadcast over a television network. And I believe, and I want to pray for those individuals who, who administer, who own, who run Christian television networks because they are going to be the ones on the front lines initially. They are going to be the ones initially they're told, you can't show that. You have to stop that. And what are they going to do? I believe the vast majority, in fact, my hope is all of them, will say as Peter and the early apostles did, Whether it's right or wrong for us to broadcast this, you decide, but we cannot help but to speak in that name, the name of Yeshua. And that's why when we look here, notice what it says. Verse 22 once more. And you will be hated by all. Pretty clear. On account of my name. But keep reading. But the one who... And we need to be very careful not to misinterpret this last part of the verse. We read, 
but the one who endures, persevere. It's a word of patience. The one who endures, perseveres, patience. You know, the Hebrew word for patient is a word to mean to suffer. The word ani sovel, I'm suffering, comes from the word sablanut, or sablanut comes from the word sovel. So patient involves suffering and suffering long. We read, the one who endures until the end. Now I would just underline that phrase, that word, the end, why? Because you have to ask yourself, what end are we referring to? See, there are those who simply don't understand what the word of God is saying. They want to understand everything from a, a past tense, history. Saying, oh, almost everything in the Bible is, is about the past. It's historical. Some of the Bible is prophetic. And although the disciples were sent out historically, it was an historical event. They did go out. In Luke, you can see their return and the outcome. But in Matthew, this is highly prophetic, and it speaks about the last days. And we read at this verse, the one who endures until the end. What end? The end of. Here's the key. Who's he speaking to? Believers. The end that Messiah is referring to is the end of the church age. And it says the one who endures. Now we have to be careful. And this is the confusion. It says will be saved. Does that mean that you are saved, forgiven from your sins because of your perseverance? Absolutely not. If that was the case, it would mean that by our deeds, by our actions, we find salvation. That is a false teaching. That is an insult to Messiah who died upon that cross because it was the only way one could find forgiveness for their sins. See, this word sazo in Greek has a wide variety of, of meanings. It can be healed physically. It can be delivered from a physical problem, or it can be saved from God's eternal judgment. It is a word of victory. And this is what he's saying here. He's simply telling us that in the end, there's going to be victory. There's going to be deliverance. Our salvation is not based upon our endurance, but I believe people who are truly saved will endure. But, but, it is not saying we're saved by us, ourselves, by our work, our endurance, our perseverance, our faithfulness. No. It is our, our salvation that causes us to endure, persevere, endure to the end. So this scripture, and there's many parallel passages like it, tells the reader, in the end, the church age coming to its conclusion, there is going to be a victory. And that is seen in, in several passages of Scripture. One of my favorite is in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 and 10, when we see a great group of, of witnesses from every tribe, every nation, every people, and every language before the throne of God. And what are they doing? They have on those white garments. They're holding a palm branch in their hand, which speaks about deliverance, by means of trusting in God and they're praising God and thanking God and speaking about salvation, victory. That's what this scripture is speaking about when it says, those who endure to the end, they will be saved. They'll experience that victory that God has promised. Look at verse 23. But when they persecute you in this city, you flee into another. Did you hear that? When they persecute you in one city, then you flee to another. And once more, this scripture is, is very, very defined. We're not speaking about all over the world. And how can I be so sure? Well, because I don't try to interpret things. I try to read things carefully. And it's through careful reading that we hear God's truth, not man's interpretation. Look carefully, verse 23. 
But whenever they persecute you in this city, you flee to another. For truly I say to you, hear this last part of the verse, for truly I say to you that you will not, and this is a word for coming to an end. Conclusion. He says, you won't go to all the cities of Israel until when? You won't complete, you won't get to every city, all the end of the list of all the cities of Israel until the Son of Man, that's Messiah, shall come. And this is speaking to disciples. It's a reference to our blessed hope or the rapture. So we, yes, we're going to be persecuted, but not persecuted from the judgment or the wrath of God. Quite, quite contrary. We're going to be persecuted by those who belong to the world. Let me say that another way. Those who belong to Satan. That's where the persecution is coming from. That's where this tribulation is coming from. It's not the wrath of God because we're promised not to go through the wrath of God. So notice what he says, speaking about the last days, about how that testimony in Israel is so important. God demands it. He commands it. Look again, verse 23. Whenever they should persecute you in this city, you flee to another. For truly, that is the word, amen. For truly, I say to you that you will not end with all the cities of Israel until the Son of Man should come. It's so clear. We know something. We know that Messiah is returning for who? His disciples. And he is coming at the end of the church age. And the end of the church age will be a time of intense suffering, persecution, torture, and death. That's what we see as the outcome of that wicked empire that ultimately the Antichrist will rule over. And when we look at the message of the Antichrist, from what we learn from John, we see that he hates Yeshua. He hates that divine son of God, and he cannot stand anyone who submits to him. Be ready. Be prepared. Be prayerful because we are approaching those days. We see things, signs on the horizon that are coming closer and closer. Well, I'll close with that. Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Thank you.